Hi, and welcome to the next episode of Belly to Belly. And today we're here to talk about where sales fits in the US market entry strategy. And we are joined by great friends, Lars and Thomas from Traction. Uh, Welcome to you both. Thank you, nice to be here. Before we hop into our topic, would, would one of you mind just giving a quick summary of what Traction does so our audience has context? Yeah, sure. So uh, Traction is a company that helps or focuses on uh, Nordic companies looking to exp- land and expand in the U.S. And literally, that is what we do. We help Nordic companies land and expand. And that ranges from everything from uh, kind of assessing what's the go-to-market strategy to actually establishing the company and, and doing everything in order to to actually expand those operations. So in a nutshell, that's it. Fantastic. Well, this is great. And, and and where the name of your company is Traction, it seems like the the topic today is is exceptionally apropos. And and the sort of context here. So our audience are our companies um, and primarily B two B and B two G companies expanding into the U S. And um, and so many, at least from what I'm seeing, so many of the guides, whether it's the agencies that are are supporting companies or some of the service providers are putting out guides of sort of how to expand in the US and they've got their 10 point checklist or their 12 point checklist. And it's very rare that any of those include a mention of sales or revenue generation. Um, uh, and if it is, it's it's treated sort of secondary. Um, I guess, what do you think about that? How do you respond to that? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think there's there's probably a couple of reasons, right? One is that the folks that are giving the advice will are assuming that they have a go to market strategy and they are they know what they want to do in order to enter the country. And these are tools to aid them do everything else, right? Scaling and legal and all those things. So I think that's uh, that's you know, and that's a perfectly fine you know uh, reason. But uh, what we see is that uh, a lot of times uh, companies are very focused on how do we actually set everything up and the accounting services and incorporation and all of those things and at the end of the day if you don't have any sales none of that matters so from from our perspective is that you have to think revenue first you have to have a good strategy for that and um there's there's this old saying that you know revenue cures all else well you know if you have revenue you can buy all the other services but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be prepared. You should do it in parallel, but you have to have a very, very clear um, uh, approach and strategy for how are you going to generate those first sales? It doesn't mean that you have to capture the entire US market, but you got to have a clear path to revenue. And a lot of times it's, it's you know, the, the best folks to do that are the folks that are actually, you know, have, have founded the company, I think particularly for small to medium-sized company, because that is a service, that passion and that knowledge of the product or service itself uh, is best articulated and best known by the companies that, or by the folks that actually started the company to begin with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, if I, and if again, I wanted to just pick up on one thing you said, Lars, is like, you, you don't have to conquer the entire country. In fact, one of the things that we often tell people is like, where's your first customer? How do you get just one customer? Because it's very easy to come to the U.S. and say, I got 320, 30 million consumers. We're going to a trade show. There are 40,000 people. Great. How will you convert those numbers into just one customer? And when you say things like, well, we have the company set up. We have these things. We have all these things. I think at the end of the year, I mean, I always think like, no, you go to market. Now you're at the market. What will you do then? At the end of the year, you're sitting with your boss your job is sales in the US. What had you done? <clears throat> How had you translated all of the things, the framework that you put around you into actually generating revenue? And are you going to get your bonus if you have the right company, if you have all these other things set up? Or do you need to have customers? So you really need to do these things in parallel. Well, and you said something, Thomas, when we were kind of uh, preparing a little bit. You. You said, you know, it's possible that that it's the things on the checklist are just they're kind of easier to check off than to think about and and actually get out and make some sales and talk to customers and talk to partners and whatnot. But you, do you want to kind of share a little more about that? 
Well, I've I've spent a good amount of time uh, talking about and and teaching people about networking, and, and you know, it's one of these things where it's like if you if you go out and you stick out your hand and say, "Hey, my name is Thomas. I'd like to sell your product." It it that can be a painful pro it, it can be a painful process because you get your feelings hurt, you get rejected all the time. No one's going to reject you as you're setting up your company in the state of Delaware. No one's going to no one's going to be rejecting you as you you're doing some of these other activities. It's to some extent, even though some of these things can be difficult and time consuming, they're not as difficult and perhaps to some people as painful a process as 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 if you you go to a trade show and forty thousand people are going to show up. How do you get one sales meeting? How do you get another? How do you turn that into an actual sale? And what if you did all this work, you went to the trade show, you set up three, four, five sales meetings, and you didn't make a sale? What then happens? And so part of part of having sales front and center is you need to also be aware that, like, like Lars is saying, you need to have a go-to-market strategy that involves we need to go out and talk to customers. And I mean, I think in the tech world, you know, it's 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 talked about frequently where there are these great examples where someone got $10 million and then they're like, now we're going to develop the best possible product. They forgot to talk to customers and it turns out this wasn't as valuable for customers. But you, you need to go out, speak to customers. You can't, you can't wait for them to come to you. And, 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 you know, again, this is not really rocket science in terms of what's what needs to happen. But it, the fact is, it doesn't happen, right? It is because all, you know, you can, it's easier to go it, for the services you can control because you can just buy them, right? You can buy accounting services, you can buy, you can buy anything, you can go and buy sales. You know, you have to actually go out and do it and, 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 and you know. Um, meet the customers and and make you know make connections and I think right. that's the uh, again it needs to all happen in parallel. I'm not saying you should just go and get sales and figure out how to run scale the business later, but if you don't have the sales the sales tactic, it's you know it's all for naught. Right. Yeah. Sales are earned is what I'm what I'm hearing. Exactly. Yeah. 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 The, the rest the rest can be bought. So you know I, the one question I I have maybe uh, maybe to challenge that just a little bit i would imagine that there may be some difference by industry in terms of what uh should be prioritized certainly i think of um the big investment industries like uh life science and energy where there's usually several years of development before uh before a, a commercial product is ready um in that case would it would it be a different strategy um, uh, or a different set of priorities because there isn't a commercial product available when entering a, a new country? Yeah, I, I think it would, but I also think you're dealing with a company that has a completely different set of resources hmm. and and operational infrastructure and and all of those things. These are very established companies that mostly aren't scratching their head trying to figure out how to go and get into the u.s kind of on on their own they have the the, the resources to get kind of the right guidance and they have a re, you know multi-year strategies for how they want to enter markets so i think the uh, for those it may be that uh, some of the guides that you mentioned early on in terms of how best to set up and structure things around investments and what have you is those are the appropriate guides i think for small to medium-sized companies there are literally saying we want to enter the us and we have limited budgets right and we we need to kind of drive cash flow so we can fund the scaling of the operations it's it's a different it's a different strategy but you're absolutely right if you're a large company with multi you know million dollar investments in 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 operations and and production yeah it's it's a, it's a different it's a different game Right, but for us, for us mere mortals, we need we 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 need to have fuel for our fire. Uh, let me ask a question that kind of summarizes kind of something actionable for the company. So, if you were going to think through where sales should be in the priority list, and, and again, we're kind of we're looking at a list that sort of certainly has legal formation, regulatory, you know, office space, you know whatever the you know should be on there where do where from a you know 
a non, you know, sort of long life cycle type company uh, for, but for a normal sort of early stage market entry company, where should sales fit uh, in that uh, generally in that priority list? Well, it, I, I, it should be front and center, right? But what, what we actually do is kind of a, uh, we do a little quick diagnostic and it's very, very simple. And we're actually using what, what Amazon, the Amazon method of working backwards. So we sit down with the company and we say, why don't you write the press release 18 months into the future of where you are, the big announcement. That would include you know, product launch, partnership, whatever it is, right? We work on that press release in terms of this is our North Star, what we want to do. Sure. Then we say, what are, all the, what are all the questions that we need to answer in order for you to actually live that press release in 18 months? And that will require setting up the company, will require what is our go-to-market strategy, what does the ecosystem looks like, uh, what are kind of the, the sales and marketing efforts, what are the, re like everything, right? Mm -hmm. It just, by, by working backwards, and then you can say, all right, who's going to do what, when, and how much is it going to cost? Mm -hmm. And that gives you kind of a, in a, in a very succinct and short outline uh, of what you actually need to do. And then you can start prioritizing you know, what are the things that needs to happen first? And also, what is it going to take to actually do this? Because I think a lot of a lot of companies, particularly small, smaller companies trying to go to the US, they underestimate the costs of actually, you know, building a brand and, and really getting traction in this, this marketplace. Just, you know, marketing costs alone. So for a lot of them, it's either you go and, and get some initial sales and you go, you know, build from there. You find ways to, to partner. Uh, because going out and, and literally market your way to it through, you know, acquisition marketing or brand marketing, it is a very, very expensive proposition. And I think very few uh, small to medium sized companies really have the, the, the resources to do that successfully. And even if they did, it's really hard to do. Sure, sure. That makes and sense. We, and we find this we find this process to be really helpful because it causes the companies to look inward and to look at very concrete example of what their future is going to look like and look inside and say okay well how are we going to get there now now we're here in this conversation now we're in this process but what are the very pragmatic things that will get us there and you know it's not enough to just uh you know sort of go to some random place where you think there are going to be a lot of customers uh, and but it but it brings into uh, you know what what your company does and you have to have a strategy you have to meet these people you have to have multiple conversations with them but going through this process allows the companies to see what we see is sales needs to be front and center so no, it, it to totally um, makes sense and um, thank you this has been really good actually I, I give one parallel to what you're saying about writing the press releases in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey uh, has people start about what do you want people to say at your funeral? And then obviously you build a life around that. Hopefully uh, you're not really dealing with business funerals. That's not a, not not where I was going. But, not, not uh, <laughs> no, no, bad, bad, bad move. But um, thank you. This has been fantastic. And, you know, again, I think the, the real goal here is to start the conversation. So we're going to put your contact info in the description. And certainly, you know, I think um, let's keep the conversation going. Feel free to reach out um, to Thomas or Lars or myself with any questions. But uh, yeah, thank you both for taking the time today. Thank Thanks you. For having us. And the recording is.